Across Texas, schools are facing teacher and substitute shortages as the Omicron variant continues to spread. But it's more than a short-term problem. In the time before COVID, one in six American teachers said they were considering leaving their job. Now, the number is up to one in four teachers likely to leave. The data comes from the RAND Corporation, a nonprofit research group, and the problem goes beyond the pandemic. Monica Madden looks closer at why Texas teachers are thinking about leaving and some possible solutions. A lot of the teachers that I've talked to are completely burnt out. On Thursday morning, Round Rock ISD students walk out in support of their teachers amid the Omicron surge. There was one teacher teaching like 60 students. That's not sustainable. That theme resonates with Texas teachers in other districts like Elizabeth Meyer, who is now reconsidering her career. We are having to shoulder the burden of social problems. Eventually, you just can't do it anymore. The challenges are not new, but the pandemic has raised the stress for educators nationwide. The result of low pay, high stress, crumbling schools, and challenging working conditions. All of it has intensified these shortages. For Texas, the retention rate for first-year teachers is declining. In the 2010-2011 school year, Texas teachers had a 100% retention rate for new teachers. This dropped to 64% in the 2015-16 school year and eventually to about 50% in 2019-2020. Aside from COVID-19, reasons like lack of work-life balance, behavioral issues with students, and increasing hostility from parents are all reasons why teachers are leaving because they don't feel respected. And not only just the teachers, but the staff members that are inside the school. It takes the community to take care of the kids. Low pay is also a large driver, with Texas teachers' average annual salaries not keeping up with changes in cost of living and inflation. Meyer says there are a few things right now that are keeping her in this profession. Every teacher that goes into teaching wants to make a difference. I need support. I need training. I need resources. I need time in my day. Monica Madden joins us now. You talked to several other teachers about the issue. What are they saying about burnout? Well, Josh, this is an issue that teachers have always dealt with. They're traditionally a type of profession that take on a lot of different roles, especially when you're dealing with a large amount of kids with all different backgrounds. But COVID, of course, as we know, has completely just heightened all of these issues that teachers face of not having enough time in their day to plan ahead or, you know, working with kids who might be facing higher levels of anxiety because of the pandemic and all of this back and forth. So there's just this really overwhelming feeling of exhaustion for a lot of teachers, both new and long time who have been in the profession for a while. You talked about decreasing retention rates for first year teachers, but we know that it, that isn't the only group of teachers that are leaving, right? Right. I talked to the National Education Association and they talked about a large number of more mid career and senior teachers leaving the industry. And of course, the problem that creates is for mentorship and uh, newer staff who are looking to those more experienced teachers for guidance. And then also in turn, when you have those people leaving mid career, you're losing that level of experience they have. So ultimately, educators say the kids are the ones who suffer when that happens. Yeah, and we saw the student walkout in Round Rock ISD this week. They did it to protest COVID conditions, but also to support their teachers. What did you hear from the students? Well, these students say that they're no noticing the differences in the classrooms, especially when it comes to disproportionate ratios of students to teachers. When you have so many who are calling out sick with COVID or, you know, just flat out quitting because they're exhausted, then you have teachers having to take on larger classrooms. And of course, that's harder to manage. Now, a couple of the students at Round Rock said that they aren't even really noticing the stress of their teachers, which I thought was interesting. It just goes to show how hard these teachers are working to make sure their students aren't seeing how much they're struggling on the inside. The people in your story talked a lot about the problems, but did any of them speak about the solutions that are in underway? Yeah, absolutely, Josh. The National Education Association says a lot of these challenges would be helped by adding more resources like specialty staff. More mental health professionals, for example, could help with those trying to juggle teaching math class and trying to diffuse behavioral situations with students. All right, Monica, thank you very much. Thank you.
Texas teachers have also been caught up in the politics of what can be taught in the classroom. Texas was one of nine states that enacted laws to limit how schools can discuss race and gender. Supporters said one goal was to keep teaching critical race theory out of the classroom. And now lawmakers in at least 12 states have introduced legislation to require schools to post lists of all their teaching materials online, including books, articles and videos. Similar legislation failed to win approval from Texas lawmakers in the last legislative session. Teachers, their unions, and free speech advocates say the proposals would excessively scrutinize daily classwork and would lead teachers to preemptively pull potentially contentious materials to avoid drawing criticism. Prices are rising for just about everything you buy. That inflation also has a big impact on bond projects. Money voters approved in the past may not be enough to cover the costs. It's, it's very tight, you know, and these are big projects. How some communities are making adjustments for the changing economy. 